so I have the quizzes graded. I have them here to return. Someone remind me to get them back to you before the end of the period, okay? Um, if you want to do a retake on the no-calc quiz, there is a worksheet you have to do. Okay, it's short, sweet, but that's the prerequisite for taking. And you can retake part of the quiz without the other part. If you did great on the calculator part, but did poorly on the no-calc, you can just take that, and I'll keep your score from the other part. Does that make sense? All right, on Tuesday, we're going to be done with this chapter. We need to finish before Thanksgiving break. We're going to finish the log chapter. We have to go through worksheet 8 today, some more equation solving. We will finish with plenty of time. Tomorrow, we're going to do worksheet 9A or 9B, which is Newton's Law of Cooling. And then you have the rest of the time to work on worksheets 10 and 11. Friday, we're supposed to be doing worksheet um, 12, 13, 14, 15. I don't even know which ones of those we're supposed to be doing. But I'm going to cut that lesson to the bare minimum, okay? It's a lesson on finding different kinds of regression equations. You know how we did... Um, exponential regression, power regression, quadratic regression, linear regression, okay? It introduces some more kinds, and then there was this fancy test you're supposed to do to decide which is the best kind. It's not on the final. It's not in calculus. I'm just going to skip the fancy test part, and I'm going to, the one on the test tells you exactly which regression to do. So we're going to do four or five examples on Friday of what could be on the test, and then I'll assign maybe three or four questions off the worksheets, and that's it. All right, deal? So what you need to have done for Friday, so Thursday you will have some time to work, and Friday hopefully you'll have a little bit of time to ask questions if you still have questions on that stuff. But Friday, those are the things that are due on the homework check. It's just book work. I didn't put worksheet seven on there. We Most of you did it with us as review for the quiz. I didn't put up there. Same thing with the review assignments at the end of this chapter, worksheet 16 and 17. I'm actually not going to put on a homework check. So go ahead and don't do them until you need to do the retake, and then you'll have to do them. That was sarcasm, okay? Please do them, and then you won't need to do the retake. Does that make sense? Okay. And I believe they're in the um, binder. So Monday will be questions on anything you need, and I will go over anything that I'm worried about being on the test. You know how I always have, like, these are the five questions I'm worried about being on the test. All right. So for today, SAT prep question. Some of you already been looking at this probably. My thing with this, again, is narrow the choices. What polynomial must be added onto this so that the answer will be this? Okay. Not D or C because there has to be 5x squareds and we can't add 5x squareds onto the x squared to get 5x squared. Yeah, negative 5 plus 6, that one we could probably eliminate. And uh, Miranda also said this has to disappear, so we needed a negative 3x, so b seems a good choice. I know you would all get this question right. That I'm just trying to strategize with you about, okay, about how to best approach some of these problems so that you save time. Does that make sense? I was also told this morning that if as a junior you choose to be gone on the day of the SAT and don't do the makeup, you don't get to be a senior next year. It's a requirement, so make sure you're here. All right. Exponential logarithmic equations is what we are going to do some more of today. I have narrowed these notes down a little bit. Um, because we already did 9A, remember there were four strategies, okay? Write as a common power. If there is an X in the exponent, take the log of both sides. If it had a log in more than one place, combine them if you can, okay? If you had two logs equal, then you could get rid of the logs exponentiate, okay? Those are the things we talked about already. This is just reinforcing that. Um, this magical property says when you have two things with the same base, then x has to equal y. So can we rewrite this with the same base? We could do base 2 or base 4. Base 4 seems easy because we don't have to mess with this. So we have 4 to the x minus 1. What is 16 as a power of 4? OK. 
okay? And then what happens to this 2 and this x? So we have 4 to the x minus 1 equals 4 to the 2x. We could do some crazy business, but basically these have to be equal because the bases were equal, yes? So then if I just subtract an x, I get negative 1 equals x, and we're done. It's already done for you, right? Yeah. I got it right, yes? Okay. <laughs> this is where it gets real nasty real fast. I'm kind of confused why this one is at the top of the worksheet, honestly. But this is a factoring problem. We're going to think about this as e to the x squared. Does that seem okay? That would be a 2x. And we're going to write minus 3 e to the x plus 2. Now, some of you could factor that using e to the x. We do this in all the time in calc and higher math. They do what's called a u substitution. They say, I'm going to pretend for a minute that that e to the x was just a u. So this becomes this. Does that seem okay? I don't know why. They just call it u substitution. Maybe because it's something they don't use a lot already. I don't know. So now it would factor how? u minus 2, u minus 1. Okay, but what is u really? At some point, we need to substitute it back in that this is really e to the x. All right, so now if I solve each of those, I get e to the x equals 2 or e to the x equals 1. Guess what? We still don't know what x is. Yeah, we need to do the log of both sides. So we get the natural log of e to the x equals the natural log of 2. What is all this? Natural log of e to the x. Just x or 1. x times 1. So we have x equals the natural log of 2, which is approximately, anybody type in for me? Point. Point. This one, if we do the log of both sides, we'd have the natural log of e to the x equals the natural log of 1. Do not type on your calculator. E to what power is 1? Zero. So this is 0. So our two answers for x are either 0 or point, uh, they wrote ln of 2, I think, or it's 0.693. Okay? We're going to do another one of those that isn't done for you on a minute. Yes, the test is Tuesday. I, I was worried it, we were going to be pushing it at the end, so that's why I'm shortening up Friday's lesson so that we don't run out of time and you feel overwhelmed next week. I think we'll have plenty of time for review now. I cross off A. It's just easy, right? You just do the log of both sides and have some crazy business. X, ln of 3. You could do LOG, it doesn't matter, and then you would just divide... And you'd get some crazy decimal, right? Okay, let's talk about B, though. Always, Algebra 1 first. Add 6. Okay, now we're done. <laughs> now we're to pre-calc. What do we need to do to both sides? Because the X is in the exponent. Log of both sides, and which log are we going to use? Ln. LN. Okay. And what are we going to do with the exponent then? I can write it up here, but I'm really going to end up... I don't know if it'll let me move it. No, it's attached. I thought my, my magic might work. We're going to move it out there. And we got to do ln of 7 over here. Okay. What happens ln of e? It's 1. So we end up with 8x plus 1 equals the natural log of 7. If this were on the quiz, one question on the test says, give an exact answer and a decimal approximation. Could you tell me how to write this as an exact answer? Okay. Good job, ladies. I don't know that the one that says give an exact answer is that complicated, but is everybody okay with what we did? 
and then you would just type it in and get a decimal approximation. Did anybody already do that? Oh, you have this one done already? Oh, then why did I bother to skip one that was already done for you? They got what? Did you not get that? Okay. Somebody took my calculator earlier today. I don't think I have one. Managed to kill Miss Felzone's calculator. I got point one one eight. Did you not get that? You do have to do ln of seven, close parenthesis, and then minus one, enter, and then divide by eight. Better? Great question, though, because that's the kind of thing. You do all the work right and then get it wrong on the test because you typed it in wrong. That's frustrating. All right. What's going on here? Not done for you. Help me out. Okay, so this guy is going to stay there. Base 3 over here would be 3 squared to the x. So what do we do with these guys up here? So we just get 2x equals 3x minus 4 because they had the same base, so we can get rid of it. Be careful. This is the kind of problem I'd make a mistake. I got 4. Yeah, that's, that's a big discussion about that. It was cute because I went out answered the phone call about my daughter and and uh, I came back in she had called me on the phone already and said that there was an issue so I had to come get my phone and go over it I told them there was something going on and I came back in and they were teaching the lesson to each other <laughs> all right how can I rewrite this eight is not a power of four okay eight is not a power of four they're both powers of 2. How can I rewrite this? Because this was a struggle for some of you on the quiz. You got this backwards. This is 2 squared in the denominator, so it's 2 to the negative 2. 2x minus 1. And over here, what's 8? 2 times 2 times 2. So that's 2 to the negative 3. All right, so now we have negative 2 times 2x minus 1 equals negative 3 times 11 minus x. You guys are going to town, right? Yep. Anybody else get 5? Did you get that, Omar, or are you stuck? Huh? Okay. <laughs> you saying it x equals 5? <laughs> Everybody okay? Is everybody Miran but Miranda okay? All right. So can you try this one on your own? What can we do here? Powers of 2 again. So this is a 2 squared. And this is a what? I would probably get this one wrong doing some silly arithmetic at the end. Did you get one half? Yes. Did you get two? <laughs> What's wrong? 
Did I make a mistake? I got one. You're okay? <laughs> All right. This little side note over here says you can really solve any of these by graphing. Okay. So the problem with a lot of these, if you solve by graphing, is finding an appropriate window. When the answer is 0. 0.112, depending what the graph looks like, it can be hard to find a window that will show that very clearly. Um, so you could graph this, but can we do it the way we just talked about, a u-substitution? What would this be? 2 e to the x squared plus 12 e to the x minus 54. If I call u e to the x, what do I get? Okay, I don't know about you, but my first thought is we need to do what? Uh, yeah, divide out a 2 or just factor out a 2. It's the same difference. Okay, factors a 27 that makes 6. Good job, Camden. Okay. So now I get negative 9 or 3. Am I done? Yeah, unfortunately i got to make this e to the x and this e to the x, which then means I have to do what? ln of negative 9 and ln of 3. Emma, who never says boo in this class. I just laughed out loud when I read your quiz yesterday. Because can you take the log of a negative number, guys? No. So she writes, I don't know, not possible or something. She writes, not, nice try, Hoffbauer. <laughs> that was, <laughs> yes, a couple people said that. But I just nice laughed try. because Emma never says boo, and then she wrote me a nice try. All right, so the answer is ln of 3. Are we good? Everybody good? Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. All right. We okay? Number five I crossed out just because I thought we had enough practice. What do we got to do first on number six, though? Do we do have to divide. Guys, there was a question on the quiz that said, Something like $3,000 grew to $6,000 by what rate in 10 years or something crazy? Remember that? Mm -hmm. I had some people subtract 3000 from both sides. <laughs> we should just be dividing by 3000 right? I'm not even saying it was in this class. I just want to clarify that. All right. I don't know that it was. Okay. We're going to divide both sides by 2.4. We'll have e to the x minus 6 equals, does that come out really nasty? We could leave it and divide it in later. Oh. But you could divide it now or you could just leave it 9.8 over 2.4. I don't care. Then we have to do what? Okay. ln, ln, and then bring down the x minus 6 in the front, and ln of e is 1. So then we're just going to add the 6 over there, and we're good. Oh, i got to take the log. I forgot to do that part. No, I got 7.355. We okay? All right, let's try 7. I'm going to do L-O-G this time just to be different. You can, you can do L-N. You will get different decimals along the way, but you'll get the same answer. 
So if you want to be creative, you try it the other way. Now, can we just get rid of the logs? No. We could, but we'd be back where we started. We can't set the exponents equal, right? Yeah, we just got to move those out in front. X minus 1 times the log of 6. And then we're going to get some crazy decimals. I went with typing these both in. So 2 times the log of 3. Okay. Equals, and then over here, the whatever the log of x is, 6 is, oh my, can't even read, yeah, 0. 0.7882, and then that's got to be distributed. For the log of 6? Oh, thank you. Yeah, a couple of people did that on the quiz read a number wrong and I felt so bad. Claire. What? <laughs> I think you got one wrong that like it said 29,760 and you wrote 27,960 when you, you transposed two numbers when you did the problem. And I was like, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> I saw a quarter of a moment. <laughs> I, I actually just, it was a one point problem, I just counted it wrong because if I hadn't been looking at her work, like I didn't grade everybody's that carefully, so I don't want to give her half point, I give somebody else. Ah, uh, I typed wrong, somebody tell me what you got. Negative point, four point something? No one else is doing it this way? No one else did it? Or did I write? Okay, sorry. I subtracted this over to here. That was a positive, but this was left as a negative. Negative, what did you get, guys? Okay. I would accept anything that probably started negative 4.4 because somebody's going to have rounded different along the way or something. This is not a super difficult problem, but it is a very easy question to make arithmetic mistake on, right? Because there's so much, like an algebra 1 you mistake. Okay. You don't, you have this one worked out for you, so I'll go kind of quick, but what would we do first? Anybody tell me what I do first? Add one. Um, I think you definitely add one first. <coughs> then. Then you try. No, we got one more easy step. Divide, divide, divide by, by two. two. No. Now we have the log base five of four x equals six. Okay, one log. Yes, you can either exponentiate. Hoffbauer says just rewrite it. Okay. But you can exponentiate. I'm fine. So exponentiate means there's a base 5 down here, right? So we're going to put each side as an exponent of 5. Log base 5 and a 5 here will cancel each other out, and we just get 4x equals 5 to the 6th, which is what rewriting that would have meant. You had a 5 down here. You get 5 to the 6th equals 4x. Same thing. Okay, I don't know what 5 to the 6 is, it's a big number. And then you divide that by 4. I got 3906.25. Is that what they have? All right, so let's try this. This is a hard question, honestly. A lot of people would cancel out the logs here. And be, but does this have a log? No. When there's two logs 
and one that doesn't. Do you remember what it said to do on the strategies? Yeah, combine, combine, compact. Remember, compact the logs. The issue, I would have, if I was going to put this question on a quiz, which I'm not saying I wouldn't do, because I would, but I'm thinking I would have started it out like this, because that's a little less confusing to me. We're going to take and do what with these? Plus means multiply. Yep, good job. <laughs> then we're going to do what? <laughs> yes, we can rewrite it or exponentiate. Okay. So we have this times this. Can I switch the order? Equals 2 to the 5th. I guess I'll distribute first. I kind of want to divide by 2, but I won't confuse you. 2 to the 5th is 32, yes? Okay, subtract this over so that it equals 0. Divide everything by 2. Factors of 16 that make 6. Okay. Any comments? Okay. We just talked about that you can't take the log of a negative number. Excuse me. So it says it's always good to check your solutions, but it's especially important when you're dealing with logs because they're. If I put a negative two in here, I get the log of negative eight. Nice try, Hoffman. Right? Can't do that. Okay. Can I put an eight in though? Sometimes they don't. Positive don't even work. But eight minus six is positive two, so we're okay, right? All right. So, oops, gotta cross this guy out. Moving on to this one. Okay, this whole slide should take one minute. Go. Okay, number four. All right, number nine and ten. Carson, you got the first one? What do you have? No. <laughs> that was Kirsten the genius in seventh hour. Okay. Now what? What are we doing over here? This is equally as easy, guys. What do we do over here? So the fact that it was base 12, did that matter? No. Nope. Okay, did you get those both done in one minute? Whew. Excuse me. All right, what about this one? Can we just get rid of all the logs? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay, this has giant numbers, but it gets better. Okay, if we get rid of this, we need to foil this together. What do we get? No, it's not, but it's close. 320x squared, and then there's a minus 32x, a plus 40x. And a minus four. Yeah, when I start skipping steps, that's when I usually make a mistake. This is 8x, positive 8x. Now I need to subtract a whole bunch of stuff, right? What did we end up with? 
factors. So we get x equals two would make this thirty-four and this thirty-eight and this some big number. <laughs> negative one would be negative sixteen plus two is negative fourteen. What do you think? Not so good. All right. But two works. All right, try this one. Do this one. Don't just try it. Do it. Anybody get factors of 48 that make 8? By the way, the one on the quiz that possibly has an extraneous solution might say be sure to check for extraneous solutions. <laughs> Because I'm just nice that way. Okay. Um, does this one have an extraneous solution? It means it means an extra solution that doesn't really work. So I can't plug it back in and it works. So the crazy math I did got me a solution that doesn't check. It just means it doesn't check. Yes, the answer is just 4. Yeah. If I plug it back in, guys, I have 4 plus 20 equals 8 plus 10. 4 times 20 equals 8 times 10, right? Even though it says plus, you would combine them by multiplying. Okay, a couple of quick application problems. This is about radioactive decay. Does anybody know how fast things lose radioactivity? Very slowly. Very slowly. Okay. Negative point zero 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 four three T. Initial amount was fifty grams and it's decaying down to ten. So we're gonna do fifty E to the negative point zero 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 four three T. We want to get down to ten. First step. Yes, you could do this graphically, but again, finding a window will be a challenge. Divide by 50 is 0.2. Yeah, you can write one-fifth. Then what? L and a B is just 1. Divide by that crazy decimal. Three thousand something. About 43 years if we round to the nearest year. That's definitely not. So 3,000, almost 4,000 years to get it down from 50 grams to 10. Okay. No? Not getting that? It's, this is a hard question because it's so easy to lose a zero or not put a decimal in front of the two or do something crazy when you're typing. Did you get it now? Okay. Richter scale question, the function used to measure the magnitude R of an earthquake is given by this crazy formula where E is the energy in kilowatt hours that is released by earthquake. The magnitude 0.6 is going to go in for the R, or 6, I can't even read. 0.67 log of 
37e plus 1.46. Algebra 1. Subtract. Last period, they all wanted to divide first. Now what? Now divide. Now, is this a base E question? No. There's an E in this question. They are trying to confuse us. The, the E is just a variable. It's not little E. Yes, this is a base 10, right? So we need to exponentiate or just rewrite it as 10 to the 6.776 equals 0.37e. Okay, think about how much energy it takes to move and destroy buildings in an earthquake. It's going to move this. It's not 2. E is 161 million, no, 16 million, 16 million. Yeah, I can't put the dust, the commas in. 16,136,089 kilowatt hours. Now what you got? I didn't do it. It's a measure of energy. I don't know. You have to ask your physics teacher. Oh, and because it's such a big number, the further in it will be off by more. Yep. Did you get 16 million ish? Okay. Um, guys, this is one more quick one that you don't have. This is one where you have to use the 12 that's down here. I would have to compact this side. Everybody okay? Yeah. And then I would exponentiate and have 12x times x minus 1 equals 12 squared. This is, earlier we had a problem just like this. And I said, oh, I really want to do that. This is where... If you divide it out now, it's okay. Because now I have x squared minus 1x. And over here, what's 144 divided by 12? So factors of negative 12 that equal 0. Uh, x minus 4, x plus 3, 4 and negative 3. What do you think about the solution? Don't automatically throw away negatives. Sometimes they actually work. Okay. This is, oh, this is what you need to work on tonight. And it's not the same as listed at the bottom of the worksheet. It's a little bit shorter, okay?